I just beat all of Elden Ring without taking a single hit. This is how I did it. I start off by selecting the Samurai class because it has very solid starting gear and stats, and more importantly, the Giga Chad character model. The first boss is the Grafton Scion. The strat here is to bait out the side swinging combo, dodge into the third attack and parry the fourth attack, punish that with a riposte and follow up with an unsheath heavy. Do that about four times and the boss should die. Some people think that this boss is unnecessary and jump off the cliff to avoid fighting it, but that's some Weenie Hut Jr. shit, so I don't do it. Now should be a good time to address the exact rules of a no hit run. Any deaths count as a hit unless they are mandatory, and any damage or stagger that originates from an enemy also counts as a hit. This means that any self-inflicted damage or environmental damage like fall damage doesn't count as a hit. And since this death at the beginning is mandatory, it also does not count as a hit, but it is the only mandatory death within the whole game. So after dealing with the tutorial boss, we do about an hour worth of setup. And instead of showing you all that, I'm just going to show you what the result of it is. So first off, we explore this much of the map. We unlock all the way down to Red Main Castle and all the way up to Volcano Manor. We use all sorts of spots in between to gather a Death's Poker to plus nine. We also get the Bloody Slash Ash of War to put on to... Uh, an Uchi, and that way we can set up our Red Feathered Branch Sword, which raises our attack power when our HP is low. Over the course of the rest of the run, there are a few more items that I will also grab to help us with a few fights. I will grab up a couple sleep arrows along the way, as well as utilize those with the short bow in order to sleep the various godskin fights. I will also pick up the Golden Vow Ash of War to give us a 12% buff to all of our damage. I'll put that onto the Iron Balls. And I will also pick up the Flame of the Red Mains Ash of War, buy a dagger and put it onto that. Flame of the Red Mains is an Ash of War that does a whole bunch of stagger damage that I will use to stagger a couple of the later bosses. Obviously, I'll also pick up Golden Seeds along the way up until I reach eight charges of plus three blue flasks. At this point, I am finally ready to fight some bosses. To progress into Lane Dell, two of the five available shard bearers must be killed. The first one that I chose is Radon, mostly because he doesn't have a dungeon in front of him that I have to deal with, and instead is just a standalone boss fight. As long as a fire in the Altus Plateau is lit, this will start the festival of Radon, and that means that Red Main Castle will be entirely empty. For every fight on this run, I use the Bloody Slash Ash of War to set my HP to a low level so that the Red Feathered Branch Sword will give me that 20% damage buff. I start off the fight by running away from Radon. This does a weird thing where he turns invisible, forgets where I am, and decides to put his bow away. This allows me to just bypass the tedious opening of the fight and just get right into it. Now it's all about waiting for him to do his crawling six move combo. Once he does, I space myself to use one weapon art, which does just enough damage to transition him into his phase two. As he's doing the phase transition animation, I get in a second weapon art. And after that, he's guaranteed to do this AOE move. I roll through it, get behind him and do one final weapon art to take him out. After taking out Radon to become the only Giga Chad left in the lands between, I have to do something very sad. Rest in peace, Alexander. I'll use a chunk of your body to buff my Ashes of War by 10%. The next fight is the Godskin Noble in Volcano Manor. The strat for this one is really simple. I use the short bow with the Barrage Ashes of War and four Sleep Arrows to put this boss to sleep. 
Once he's down, I use Golden Vow and two casts of the Ash of War to take him out. The next boss on the list is Praetor Rikard. This may not seem like the easiest of the shard bearers to take out, but there's a very easy cheese to use on him. The first attack of the Ash of War on the special weapon that you get for this fight staggers both the God Eating Serpent and Rikard for a long time. So it's possible to just stagger loop him with that. The only issue is FP, but that can be solved by using a Starlight Shard before both of the two phases so that it just passively regenerates. And just like that, both of the required shard bearers are dead, and at this point, I go back to round table hold to pick up another talisman slot so that I can equip the shard of Alexander. Perfect. I think I maybe messed up this transition a little bit. I maybe could have gotten hit by his fast move if he went for it. But he didn't. So it's fine. A bit close here. I love the profile of the face that you get when when he goes for the L2. You can just see the Giga Chad smiling. <laughs> now it's time to head towards Lane Dell and the Draconic Tree Sentinel. For this guy, I just sneak behind him use golden vow then do a light ash of war followed by a heavy ash of war and then he's dead golden godfrey is the next mandatory boss to take out and for him I bait out an easy to avoid attack, then back up enough to give myself space to stay out of range of the dash forward stomp attack. And then I lay down a fire trail with the Ash of War and let Godfrey damage himself, repeat this four to five times, and then he dies. Okay. Um, yeah, we don't quite have enough space for an attack here. Let's 
sir. Oh, Jesus. Only reason I'm doing this is because he's so weak. It's a bad idea otherwise. Orgot comes next, and for him, I stay at a medium range until he gives me a spear attack into jumping punish. And once he does, I run under the attack, use a flame trail, run away to avoid the AoE, then use another flame trail. After that, I gotta look out carefully for the random geysers that spawn up on the ground. And then, once I know that I'm safe, I use one final flame trail, take him out. After that, I go on an absolute journey through the mountaintop of the giants to make my way all the way up to the fire giant. This strat requires a little bit of RNG farming, so if I don't get the attacks that I'm looking for, I use the memory of grace to port back out to the last side of grace that I rested at, just outside of the fire giant boss arena. So what I'm looking for from this boss is the big jumping attack in the phase one. After that, I beat his ankle like he's Achilles, He'll roll away, I chase him and do one final Ash of War to transition him into his phase two. Once there, I use the grass on the ground to position myself correctly and keep spamming Ash of War and avoiding attacks until he dies. This is the point where he will sometimes screw me over with RNG and just give a bad attack. And if that happens, I just use the memory of grace, go outside the boss arena and restart it until he eventually does give a good attack that allows for an easy phase two. This fight, ironically, is pretty similar to the Godskin Noble fight and isn't that difficult, where I just use the Barrage Ash of War on the short bow to sleep both of the two enemies and then once they're both sleeping, I use Golden Vow in a flask. Then I make sure to only deal damage to one of them at a time so that I can get full damage. And after that, they just die. Okay. For Malekith, in phase one, I bait him over to this pillar and then use the fire trail to go over the pillar and deal damage. In phase two, this strat is pretty precise. I run forward and to the right and then use Flame of the Red Mains twice to stagger Malekith. Once that happens, I use one L2, then I go for the Repost, then I go for a Heavy Ash of War, and then he's dead. Astonished. 
Gideon is the next boss, and I honestly got a little bit lucky with this fight. Normally, the strat here is to use the Ash of War to deal some damage early on, and then use a Rapier with a Bleed Attunement, because it's very fast and will interrupt all of his attacks while dealing damage with the Bleed procs. But for this run, I got lucky and was able to just kill him with the Death's Poker, because he didn't really stagger out of the attack. Oralu is a really hard boss and that's why i have so many strats for him first off i go into the arena and immediately memory of grace out so that on the second attempt he'll be further away from me at the start of the fight after that it's just about spacing and dealing damage to get as close to about 6,000 damage without actually going over 6,000 damage this is because he does the big stomp and changes his behavior at that threshold and i don't really want to deal with that because it's very hard to deal with after getting the damage set up, I use Golden Vow, a flask, and go for another fire trail. I then dodge the big stomp and use the Ash of War again to transition him into phase two. Phase 2 took a lot of work to get a strat for, but I start by strafing the first move, then using an L2. I then dodge backwards and predict when he's going to go for the big stomp move, then I use a flame trail to do big damage. I got lucky with this fight on this run because I mistimed my dodge of his slam attack, but the fire trail damage killed him before it went off. Radagon isn't super difficult. I run up to him, pressing L2 twice. This does enough damage for him to do the foot stomp into jump into the air move, which I punish with a jump attack and two more L2s. This should be enough damage to get the triple hammer slam move, but in this run, I was one single light attack away from that threshold. So I was absolutely shitting my pants trying to find a window to get one extra light attack in, but eventually I did. After that though, Radagon goes for the triple hammer slam, I get one L2 in between the second and third slam and then go for a fire trail after the third and then he's dead. Elden Beast is an absolute bastard, mostly because of one attack. The Elden Stars are essentially impossible to dodge, so to deal with it, the Beast needs to be staggered out of the attack. The fight starts by doing a Fire Trail attack and then a Heavy Ash of War. The Ring attack is guaranteed after that, and with the right spacing, it's possible to know exactly where the Elden Beast is going to come out of the water. I do another Heavy Ash of War, and at this point, the boss's moves are entirely random. So, I wait for a melee attack where I can get one more L2 in to get him close to 50% health, and then at 50% health, the beast is guaranteed to go for the Elden Star's attack that I need to stagger him out of. So, I start to build up the stagger by using Flame of the Red Mains, and just hoping that he gives me multiple melee attacks in a row.
Once the stagger is set up enough, I use a flame trail to put the beast below 50% and then another flame of the red mains to stagger him out of the Elden Star's attack. And that is the hardest part of the fight done. And then after dealing with the Elden Stars, it's just about finding one final window to actually take the Elden Beast out. And that's the challenge completed. Let's fucking go, dude! Let's fucking go! Oh my god! Oh my god! Holy shit! Let's go! <laughs> Woo, baby! I know this video may make it seem like this challenge wasn't super difficult, but this took me a solid two weeks to get it down and two weeks of grinding and routing and figuring strats out. But obviously, I eventually figured it out and got the world's eighth completion of Elden Ring No Hit. If you want to watch the full unedited run, I will have that link down below in the description. Thanks for watching. If you did enjoy, please consider subscribing and liking the video. It really does help me out.